seen us through, this is seen us through uh, thus far. This is our last. A good God, we thank God. Seen us through, this is seen us through uh, thus far. This is, and I just want to tell everybody out there to keep on praying. Not only that, but you keep on believing and you keep on trusting in God. Our scripture text today is taken, that is, from the book of Ecclesiastes. And it's Ecclesiastes that is uh, the 12th chapter, in the last two verses. Listen to this. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into the judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. And God, once again, if we come, that is not only to your house, Lord, but as we come under your covering. And we know that there's worship here and there's songs uh, of, of, good, of good cheer and all of the great things that are here. And we believe that in the house of God that we can be blessed. We ask of God that you would come with us now, Lord, and that we would let the world experience that is who you are as we sing and as we share today. We thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So some time to hear this though.
you. We praise you. We thank you for who you are. Not only who you are, but what you have done. That is in the life that is of everybody that I'm speaking to, that is today and others. And we thank God for that. Amen and amen. It's time for us to have prayer at this particular time. Amen. We're going to ask our Sister Henry to come back with the prayer song.
say it was well that is with my children or those that are around me. But it went a little further than that. It said that it's well with my soul. And everybody has a soul. I don't know nobody who don't have a soul. And I'm just, I'm just thankful to hear that song. See, we need singing like that. Because everybody's worried about what's going on around us. You understand? And how is this one and that one getting along? But it's just good to hear that word. And that God breathed into man the breath of life. And he became that he is a living. He became a living soul. We thank you. Father, once again, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. That we can resound upon that. That our souls matter. That everybody has a soul. And our soul matters. We just ask God that you would bless us today. And that you would roll out the red carpet and allow the Holy Spirit to walk around in this place. And to bless somebody. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. I want to talk about today the conclusion of the whole matter. The conclusion of the whole matter, that is. Now, here Solomon is, he is describing that is the disconnected life and what it is to be, to be disconnected from God. Because there's a lot of people out there that are not connected that is with God. Or they are living apart. They're living apart from God. Lord have mercy. They really are. And, and, and this disconnection from God means that there's a lot of discontentment that's in their life, believe it or not. You see, life is meaningless if you are what? If you are not connected, if you're disconnected, that is from God. Amen. But it has meaning if you are connected, that is, to him. Because in him we live and we move and we have our being. So if we have, if you read this book in any kind of a way, the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon, he, he, he how can I say, he summarizes it and, and at the end of this book. And, and now, amen, he tell, he's telling us what to do. And he let us know the conclusion that is of the whole matter. And this is the last summary of the Ecclesiastes. Because if you will look at it, it's the last book. And then not only that, but it's the last two verses. That's what it is. And he gives us the conclusion that is to life and to man. You understand? Now everything has a beginning and everything has an end. Even the church began on the day of Pentecost. You understand? And we all have a beginning and an end, but well, this is the conclusion of us that he's talking about, you understand. You see, and, 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 and the thing about it is, uh, I can remember when I was a boy, and I would be looking at something on the TV, maybe a cartoon, or, or some kid's story, and my mother would cry out, it's time to go and gather wood, or gather water. You understand? And, and the sad thing was, I was not able, that is, to see the ending that is of that cartoon or that TV story, you understand? You see, I didn't see it come to its conclusion, you understand? Because it's time to feed the animals, uh, to do whatever, you understand? But it's good to know, it's good to know that there is a beginning and there's an end to life. You ain't, you're not going to stay here forever, you understand? And even if you do live a long time and get caught up in the second coming of Jesus Christ, there's still going to be an ending, believe it or not. Our endings are very important. Whether you know that or not, they're very important. I don't want my ending to look important. You understand? But I want my ending to be very important to me. Although, I don't know how I'm going to end up, but I can do what? I can work. I can work and work hard while it's day. Because when night comes, nobody can work. So whenever day comes your way, you work hard. It says here the conclusion of the whole matter. Occlusion is the end or uh, finish of any event or process. That's what the conclusion is. You understand? And he says here the conclusion. 
conclusion of the whole matter. First he says, fear God and keep his commandments. You understand? But this is the whole duty of man. Now he uses the word whole twice. Whole duty? You understand? Am I right? Whole matter. Two times. Watch the words. If it comes your way twice. It, now at the beginning of the book, you understand, the preacher talks about vanity and all this vanity and we're supposed to do what? We're supposed to feel what Solomon is feeling. Now here in the final summation, he says to fear God. Amen. You see, because, because living uh, for earthly things can be a problem, believe it or not. It really, really can be a problem. Amen. And he was trying to find what? The key to life. And this is what people are trying to find. The key to life. How was you trying to find the key to life, uh, Solomon? You had 1,000 women almost, 700 wives, and 300 concubines, you understand? And he married all of these exotic women from around the world. Amen. And he wasn't happy. How do y'all know what I'm talking about? He found, he had all of this, but still yet, he said, I'm empty inside, and all of this is nothing but vanity and more vanity. And not only that, in the final summation, he said, it's like a chasing of the wind. Lord, have mercy. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I guess some of them young men out there say, maybe a thousand women wouldn't be the chasing of a wind. For me, well, you need to read Solomon. Solomon said, it actually happened to me. And all of it was nothing but that he also had parties and he said to eat and drink and be merry, you understand. He said, for tomorrow we die. That's my ending. That's your ending. You're going to leave from here. He said, there's going to be an end. He said, for tomorrow, tomorrow we die. Amen. And he believed in entertainment, wine throwing parties. Amen. But he still says I'm empty on the inside. You understand? And I need something to fill that part. Out of all of that stuff he had. You understand? All of that stuff he had. And he still said that I'm empty on the inside. So he concluded that we need to do what to fear God. Now the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. Proverbs 9 and 10. Job 20, uh, 8 and 28 said, Here is to man. The fear that is the Lord is that it's the beginning of wisdom and to turn away from evil is what? Understanding. Because all of you, out of all you're getting, you've got to get an understanding. And he's what? You see, and he, he, he's where Solomon is speaking. You understand? And Solomon says real, bona fide wisdom means something. And you've got to have some wisdom. Am I right? You cannot put new carpet on your floor if your roof is leaking. You need some common sense and then you need some what? You need some wisdom. Everybody needs some wisdom. I'm going to grow so and so because he's so wise and nothing wrong with that. I'm not against that. But you need a little bit of that yourself. But brother so and so ain't going to be around all the time. And you're going to have to make some major, some major decisions. And guess what I found out about decisions? All decisions, you can't go in and pray and have a 90-day monitoring, but you got to do it sometime right away in five days and four days. And sometimes, the next minute or the next hour, you have to make, believe it or not, you have to make decisions, you understand? And what we're supposed to do is to fear God. In other words, you need to do what? You, we need to be what they call God-fearing people. Remember the old preachers used to talk about God-fearing people? Well, I want the God-fearing people. Well, we should fear God, you understand? It's, we should fear, fear it. Not the kind of fear that some people think about, you understand? Whereby you do what? Whereby you uh, put board up your house and put a great big fence around, put some box of bulldogs out in your yard. No, we're not talking about that. You don't have to fear God that way. Matter of fact, the Bible says that the rod of correction will drive foolishness out of a child. And some people don't like punishing their children that way because they won't want the, uh, uh, the children to be afraid of them. But the children are never supposed to be afraid of them. They're supposed to be afraid of what? The rod. Get your fear together. You get your fear factor. You need to get the fear factor together. And here, God is not, God don't want you running from him. You understand? But what does fear mean? It means that you revere, you, re you reverence God, you respect God, you respect God's people, you respect even coming into the presence of God. Amen. 
There's a certain way you come into the house of God. A certain way you walk into this building. I'm talking about the reverence of God. You revere him. That's what I'm talking about. You see, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see, you see, uh, and, and we all, we are God fearers, but we're not afraid of God. You understand? But we are afraid to go against God himself. I'm afraid to go against his work, his will, his way. You understand? Why? Because we know that his work, amen, it, it, it is good. And not only that, but it's called kingdom work. You understand? And that's what I want to be, a kingdom builder, a kingdom worker. Amen. And that's better for us. It's just better for us to live contrary, that is, to God, is, 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 is to do what? To live contrary to God is just to do what? To destroy your life. You're going to destroy your life completely. So follow God. Walk with him. You know what I mean? Read his word. Accept his word. Amen. Now in Proverbs 1 and 7, uh, it, 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 the, the book starts out and it says that it talks about the fear of God. In Proverbs 7, the fear of the Lord, he says, is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions, he says. They don't want any instruction. You understand? They want to think and know they want everybody to believe that they know everything. No man knows anything. No woman knows everything. You understand? Nobody knows everything now. You see? And the old preacher believed, amen, that the that we should be fearing God more than we fear people. He said, we fear people. We just fear people. We do. And we do. And, 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 and it's because uh, a lot of the, we are we're dissatisfied and, we could dis, and we're discontented. That is with our life. So Solomon talks about, he says, fear God. You understand. Here's the conclusion. This is the final summation. Fear God. You understand. Then he said to keep his commandments. He keep his commandments. Amen. You see, but this is the whole duty. The whole duty. You understand? Amen. Well, well, they, they had a lot of uh, commandments back in the day. We God gave us the Ten Commandments through Moses. Amen. Uh, but before that, they had more commandments than that. As you read the uh, uh the law of Moses, believe it or not, some of them had what 613. That is commandments to hold on to. That's a lot of commandments. Now, some of us, we can't do 10. I struck. I don't know about y'all, but I struck. 600 and something. It almost like we have a commandment for every day. Believe it or not. But we are to do what? Keep his commandments. You understand? And I'm glad that we can do that through Jesus Christ. I'm glad that we can do that. That is through uh, 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 repentance and contrition. That we can do what? Go to the place of repentance, knowing that you've done something wrong. Amen. You can do that, and I'm glad to know that. If I had to keep up with six hundred and what thirteen or fourteen commandments, Lord Jesus, thank you, Jesus, for that. You see, and Jesus, when he was among the people, like the Pharisee and the Sadducee, they were always trying to trick him, trick him, and catch him up. You understand? In these laws. And all of these commandments in Matthew, that is 22, what is it, 22, 34, you understand. And they're always trying to just trick him and trap him and to do things to Jesus, you understand. Now he'd already, in the scripture text, uh, Matthew uh, 22, 34, he'd already shut the mouth of the Sadducees. Now here come the Pharisees, you understand. And they heard that Jesus had put the Sadducees, the silence the Bible said, didn't one of them, the lawyer, you know, they always ask for the small quote, smart ones now. You got to be smart and know there's a lawyer going to ask them and say, which one of those commandments are the greatest? You understand? You see, which one are the commandments? Which one of these the commandments? And Jesus said, that is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart. You understand? Your soul and with all of your mind. And this is what? The first and the greatest of the commandment. But he said, hold on, I got a second one. And that is to love God, amen, is to love the Lord thy God, that is, and to love your neighbor, that is, as yourself. So you love God, you love God's people, you understand. And the greatest commandment, in and the greatest commandment of all, Jesus said, and he talks about love. Love, love. And that's what a lot of people could not do. You understand? They could not do. But God is commanding.
commanded us. And there's so many commandments in the Bible whereby he's allowing us to step into those uh, uh, commandments, you understand? And to live in a kind of a way whereby you can wake up and you can do what? Commune with God. You can talk to God, you understand? You can even see what, uh, uh, you can even uh, uh, go into your secret closet is what I'm talk, trying to talk about. And God will be able to bless you. You can worship openly, privately, and all of those great things. And you can still love God and this people simply love God. But we got to love God's people. This is a great commandment. And if that's the great commandment, and if you only hold on to that woman, you can make it with that. That's a powerful one, isn't it? Amen. It's a powerful one. Just love God and love his people. Well, you know, I don't like the way people do some things, and I don't, I don't like it. That's sure, they say the same thing about you. But you got to still have to keep on loving. Fear God. First of all, we have to fear God, you understand. And oh, how there's not, not enough, there's not enough fear in this world right now, God. There's not enough. Fear God. Then we have to keep his commandments. Amen. You see. Number three, why should we have to do all of these things to understand? Why is it that we got to do what? Fear God. Keep his commandment. You understand? Why do we have to do that? You see? Keep his commandment. Because he is what? The only judge. And final judge. He's the only judge that you're going to run into. That's going to deal with not with the court situation, but it's going to deal with your soul. Amen? Because he will do what? You see, he will bring every word, Lord have mercy, into the judgment. The judgment. Well, my sister, she's judging me. Uh -uh, dad, that's not the real judge. <laughs> you, you, you better get through that and move on. Because one of these days, every man is going to, going to stand before the judgment bar of God and receive the things that has happened in this body. Now, here's what he said. He said, fear God, keep his commandment. Because God will bring everything into judgment. But hold on, every secret thing. Amen. That only you and God, and that one lady said, the devil knows about it. He's going to bring it back into the judgment. Then again, he's going to bring whether it's good or whether it's evil. He's going to bring it into the judgment. I guess you're going to have a jar full of good and a jar full of evil. I don't know. But he's going to bring every last bit of it into the judgment. Now we're talking about the conclusion. This is the conclusion uh -uh, of the whole matter. Believe it or not. That God is going to bring this. He's what kind of judge? He's not a judge that's in a courtroom with a black robe on. He's the righteous judge. That's what makes him different. That's what makes him outstanding. He is the righteous judge. Amen. And God can have judgment that is um, upon the whole world. He can bring wrath and anguish that is upon this whole world. That's the kind of judge he is. Amen. And God's judgment is true. Amen. But we don't talk about judgment a lot these days. Amen. We really, really don't. You see, if God's judgment is, 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 is heaven and hell, shouldn't that be a major concern of life? We don't talk about it much, y'all. You don't hear no preachers up talking about no judgment these days. Am I right? They're not doing it. But we need to talk more and speak more on the judgment. And it's good to go to church and share all those other topics that we share. We need to talk about the increase of, the increase of knowledge, positive thinking, and all of that kind of stuff. We need to talk about the givers and the takers, marriage and family and all of that. Amen. But we need to tell people about the conclusion and in this conclusion that there's going to be a judgment. You're not going to get around that. You can't change the order of God. God is the final judge. The conclusion that is of where you live and where you're living at now. You understand? You're not going to live forever. And there's going to be a conclusion both to you and I. Amen. You see, and the scripture tells us and it talks about it all the time. Now I'm about through, but I remember when I was in Bible college, and I never shall forget this, and uh, my homiletics teacher said, uh, just in case you go to preach a funeral and uh, you don't know anything about uh, 
uh, the person. This is the safest text to you. Ecclesiastes 12, that is 13 and 14. Because listen to what it said. You're the conclusion of the whole night. Fear God and keep his commandments. Sound like he's talking to everybody, every soul, every person. With God is for what you, whether you know them or not, you understand. You see, you need this text. You need this text. Because this text is for everybody. And he says God is going to bring every little thing, every small thing, everything up in, into the judgment. When I was pastoring in uh, Wichita, Kansas, there's a man uh, from Oklahoma City had died. And uh, they brought the body that is to um, Wichita because they believe he was born in Wichita. But for months they never found any body. That was basically, he was some kin to, a kindred of some kind. And so guess what they did? They told the preachers, that is the African-American preacher, he was African-American, to do what? To bury the man. And the guy that was going to do the eulogy, he said, mm, I don't know, uh, I'm going to have to find me a text. I said, brother, there's one that I know of that can set you free and everybody free. It's Ecclesiastical, what? 12, 13, and 14. That man had a conclusion. We got a conclusion today. You understand? You all think about it. You understand? We think about living and going to everybody else's funeral, so we all think about dying ourselves because that is a conclusion. There's a conclusion to everybody. Let's live there. Let's live there. And this writer said, here's the conclusion of the whole matter. Whether or not you are the, the unknown soldier, soldier with a, with a, what, a, 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 a torch on your grave, whether or not you've been shipped from Oklahoma City to Wichita, Kansas, there is a conclusion to you. And that is to fear God. We have to live in the fear of God. You understand? I know we're afraid right now because of the pandemic. Yes, we are. Many people are. But if we live in the fear of God, we just believe that God will bless us. And I believe without a shadow of doubt, He's going to do that. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you that we can know about that is the fear of God, the conclusion of life, and how you are the final judge. You are the final judge. You're the one that we're going to come and we're going to stand that is before you in the end. Bless us, Father. Bless all of us. Help us to read scripture like this, to know scripture. Help the preachers to know scripture. While they're up fumbling around and trying to say this and say that uh, concerning people at a time of death, just say, hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. And then hold to his commandments. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not, thou, thou shalt not do what a bear false witness and understand. Thou shalt not tell a lie. Let us hold to these commandments and we'll be blessed. We thank you, God. Bless us, Lord. Thank you for how you've already blessed us through this word that somebody, that somebody be, that might be blessed. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name. For those who don't know God as their personal Savior, we're saying to you today, and we're saying to you right now, you need to get to know God. You need to turn your life over to God. You need to hand Him the deed and title to your life in order that you might be saved, and not only saved, but you're blessed and you feel. And my prayer is that God will save you. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll say